Suppose we have the function y equals cos cubed of 2x squared minus 3, and we want to find dy dx. First of all, what does this actually mean? This means cos of 2x squared minus 3, all to the power of 3. What we do is we let u equal 2x squared minus 3, and we let v equal cos of u. That means that we can write y as v cubed. Okay, so if we unpack this, well, v cubed is cos cubed u. So that's the meaning of taking cos u and raising it to the power of 3. You know, we just write our 3, our superscript here. Um, and, well, we know what u is. u is 2x squared minus 3. Okay, so we can see that v cubed is indeed equal to y. So we write our function like this. So if we want to find dy dx, that's the same thing as differentiating v cubed with respect to x. But v is a function of u. So what we do is we differentiate um, v cubed, first of all, with respect to v. And we multiply this by the derivative of v with respect to u. And in turn, we multiply the u with respect to x. Now you can see that this will actually break, collapse down to the derivative of v cubed with respect to x, which is what we want. That's dy dx, because these dv's will cancel and the du's will cancel. These three quantities actually behave like fractions. You know, we can cancel numerators with denominators. We can actually write v cubed in the following form. So um, v is a function of u. I shouldn't really write it like this. v is a function of u. v equals cos of u. So v cubed is v of u all to the power of 3. But then we know that u is a function of x. So we can write u like this to indicate that u is a function of x. We just put x in brackets after it. So we're differentiating this. Um, so we take the whole lot and differentiate with respect to 3. Um, then we differentiate v with respect to u, and then we differentiate u with respect to x. And this cancelling indicates that we do indeed get the answer. Now this is not a rigorous proof by any means, um, but it's quite easy to apply. You see, if we differentiate v cubed with respect to v, we get 3v squared. Okay? It's v to the power of 3. We just bring down the power and take 1 from the power to get 3 minus 1, which is 2. If we differentiate v with respect to u, well, we're just differentiating this here. So we differentiate cos u with respect to u. If you look that up in your tables, the derivative of cos u, the derivative of cos is minus sine. Then we differentiate u with respect to x. So we have to differentiate this function here. So here we have u as a function of x. So that's going to give us 4x. And then we just substitute back in for v and u. Um, by the way, the argument of the sine function, our, our angle is u. It's not 4x. So you should bring 4x to the front. So what we get is 4x times 3, that's 12x times v squared. Well, if we go back up here, we can see that v is the cos of u. Um, and what is u? u is 2x squared minus 3. And we want to square this. This is v squared. But of course, we don't write a 2 out there. What we do is we write our 2 here. That's how we indicate um, you, uh, v squared. Then we have multiplied by minus sine u. That's minus sine of 2x squared minus 3. And, we, and I've already brought the 4x four, four to the front. So, uh, you know, just to tidy this up, all we've got to do is just bring the minus sign to the front. 
So what I've just done is a justification for what's called the power function angle rule. Uh, we use this rule when we're differentiating trigonometric functions. So you don't have to go through all this chain rule business. Um, if you just remember, it boils down to this power function angle rule. We start by differentiating the power. So we have a trigonometric function, which is cos or cosine. It's raised to a power. So we deal with that power first. So we bring the 3 in front, subtract 1 from 3 to get 2. We copy this down, we don't change this. So that's the power part done, differentiating the power. Then we go and we deal with our function. And the function we're dealing with is cos. And if you look up the derivative of cos in your tables, you'll see that it's minus sine. Now we do not copy down the power, but we do copy down our angle which is 2x squared minus 3. And finally, we multiply this by the derivative of our angle. So we take the derivative of 2x squared minus 3, which is 4x. So we multiply these, things, these three things together. So we've this is the power part. This is the result of difference dealing with the power. This part is the result of dealing with, with our function, our trigonometric function, to be more specific. Func by function, we mean the trigonometric function which is cos, differentiate cos to get minus sine, just copy down our angle. And finally, the last part is the derivative of our angle, our argument of the cos function, which is um, 2x squared minus 3. So this part is differentiating our angle. So I'm going to tidy up all of this and write it down over here. So what you should do is make sure you bring this term here to the front. So we're going to have uh, 3 times 4x, and bring the minus sign to the front as well. Uh, okay, so these three things are multiplied together, so we have 3 times minus, times 4x is 12x, so we're going to have minus 12x, and uh, then I just write down the rest of it, cos squared 2x squared minus 3 times sine of 2x squared minus 3. That's what we got up here.